Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the transfer between investment categories for debt securities. What are the categories for debt securities? So you need to know a little bit of background before we dive into this transfer between different categories of debt securities. One, we have a category called held to maturity. And these cat in the under these categories, we report the investment at amortized cost. Simply put, we ignore fair value fluctuation. And we do have two other categories. One is called trading and one is called available for sale. For trading and available for sale, we report the debt investment using the fair value. Now, what does it mean transferring between categories? Simply put, the company changed changed their mind. The management changed their intent. They wanted an investment to be held to maturity. Now they want to transfer it to available for sale. It was available for sale. They want to transfer it to trading. It was trading. They want to transfer it to available for sale. This is what we mean by transfer between different categories. So before we before you start, you want to make sure HTM is reported at cost. Fair value is used for trading and available for sale securities. Once you know this much, then you are ready to discuss the situation where we transfer one from one category to the other. Now on this slide, I have few abbreviation. When I say FV means fair value, HDM held to maturity, TS trading securities, AFS available for sale, GL gain and loss, AOCI is accumulated other comprehensive income. So I'm going to start with easy illustration or I believe easy or simple illustration then we follow and here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna have I'm gonna try to simplify this as much as possible I'm gonna have three column from two from which category transfer him to which category and here's what I'm gonna tell you the accounting it's gonna follow the category being transferred to so once it gets transferred to this category the accounting in this category will take place let me start with some simple categories then we'll 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 proceed further let's assume we're transferring an investment a debt investment from held to maturity held to maturity is reported at amortized cost and we're going to transfer this category to available for sale well what does that mean so we're going going from amortized cost to available for sale available for sale is reported at fair value well what do we have to do well we have to start an available for sale account and we have to report the investment now at fair value and as a result, since it's reported at fair value, remember fair value means you have to record any unrealized holding gain or loss, but we have to know if it's available for sale, unrealized holding gain or loss goes into AOCI. It sits on the balance sheet. That's what we need to know. So simply put, once it's transferred to available for sale, we recognize it's reported at fair value. We recognize unrealized holding gain and loss, and that unrealized holding gain and loss is reported in OCI. Let's work another example. Let's assume we have an HDM investment, a debt investment, and we're going to transfer it now to trading securities. Trading. Again, trading is reported at fair value, just like available for sale. What do we have to do? We will start a trading security account, and we report the investment at fair value, just like when we reported it for available for sale. What's the difference? Well, the difference is we record any unrealized holding gain or loss in net income. Why? Well, we know that once an investment is categorized as trading security, once a debt investment is categorized as trading security, it's, re it's reported at fair value, and the fair value adjustment, any unrealized holding gain or loss, is reported at net income. So if, once we transfer it to this category, we have to report it at how much it's worth today. It could be higher than amortized cost or lower. If it's higher, we have an unrealized gain. If it's lower, we have an unrealized loss. And we book that gain or loss, unrealized gain or loss in net income. Before we proceed any further, I would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. If you're studying for your CPA exam, I don't replace this. If you're studying for your accounting courses, I'll be happy to be an assistant to that process. My motto is saving CPA candidate and accounting student one at a time. How? By providing you with resources, lectures, multiple choice, true false, that's going to illustrate and reinforce the concept. This is a partial list of all my accounting courses. My CPA review material is aligned with your Becker, Wiley, Roger, and Gleam. So it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course because I have, I have everything aligned. I provide you access to 1,500 
additional AICPA questions, original AICPA questions with their original format and with detailed solution. So if you're studying for the CPA exam, you really don't want to miss those questions. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording on YouTube. Share it with other. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, especially on Instagram. I'm trying to grow my following Twitter and Reddit. Now we're going to go from available for sale, which is reported at fair value to trading, which is also reported at fair value. What do we have to do? Well, when we transfer it, if we have to make any, any adjustment, any adjustment, any gain or loss that was an OCI, because when it was available for sale, any gain or loss was an o OCI, we're going to take it out of OCI and it's going to hit the income statement. So simply put, we're going to take it out of OCI and let it go to the income statement and get done with it. Let's assume we're transferring from available for sale to held to maturity, held to maturity, to HTM. So we're going from fair value to cost. Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to start an HTM account because now we're going to record it at the HTM account will be at fair value. Now we're going to have, remember, if it was in fair value available for sale, we're going to have gains and losses sitting in O A O C I. What are we going to do with this unrealized holding gain or loss? We're going to take this unrealized holding gain or loss, whether it's a loss or a gain, and we're going to split it, amortize it, spread it over the remaining life of the debt, over the, over the remaining life of the asset. And this is what we do with this. Therefore, it it will be amortized in small chunks. It doesn't hit the income statement all at once. At the end of this recording, I'm going to remind you that what you should do is go to my website, farhatlectures.com, look at additional multiple choice questions, look at additional resources to reinforce this concept. Investment, transferring between categories is an important topic, whether you're an accounting student or a CPA candidate. Don't shortchange yourself. Invest in yourself. Your accounting career is important. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.